This is good lighting, man. Right here is good lighting? This is really good. Now if I... I can feel the lighting from here too. Uh, and I can also turn my light on, but I'd rather not. Right. Let's ask this guy. You got a second for us? It's him. <laughs> That's good. I'm here for me to change. All right. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something compelling, like with the We Are Free stuff. We Are Free. For now, for now, maybe. What's up, David Crowley? Happy Dependence Day. <laughs> With the gray state looming. Yeah, that's, that's strangely ironic. Strangely ironic. I was about to say, like, I gotta go interview those guys. They have my camera set up. Okay. But, uh, who are you with that? Or? I'm just here. I'm, I'm actually capturing B roll so I can maybe sell it as stock footage online. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing major, but uh, I met that tall, touchy guy. Eric? So David Crowley from Hothead Productions, gray state. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm a friend of Sean Wright's. Of course, everyone's friends with Sean. <laughs> I saw Tim walk in. Right. Basically, uh, I don't know. People keep telling us that hey, you Wisconsin fuckers got it down bad. You guys got your shit together. I'm like, thanks, because I felt like I was doing a shitty job. <laughs> I've always felt like I could do more. So, you guys doing interviews or something? Yeah, yeah why not? What for? for whatever. We are change. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. That I saw the camera. I'm like, oh, who are these guys? Right. right. There, there goes Tim. Yeah. <laughs> who are you with your family? Yeah. Let's go say hi to him. I want to say hi to your daughter. Like, you're not broadcasting, you no, it's just I'm on, just rolling. We're just trying to get some people and what they're the thinking about our independence when we actually had one of the worst weeks of our American history this week. Right, that's what I was saying as you guys walked by. Like, we're just yeah, we're, right. we're free and independent, but uh, you know, Obamacare just passed. And, uh, yeah, what do you think about text. that, Mr. Crowley? What do I think about Obamacare? Well, I'd have to read the, uh, what is it, like 3,000 page document first to make an educated decision, but I guess Congress doesn't, you know, need to do that. No, we don't need to read our bills, we just need to pass them. See, Nancy Pelosi says that, right? Well, we gotta, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not a tax, it's just a mandatory fee if you don't comply. Well, as long as it's not a tax. But it's I good, because, you know, all those people that are poor, you know, get health care now. <laughs> yeah, then I can pay for it, and then, well... So they can have more kids and, you know, have Everyone more... Everyone here will pay for it, as long as they're not an illegal immigrant, then they won't have to. But, you know, they all, they've all got free reign. Kind of this week made the gray state a little bit closer, don't you think? The ramifications of what you're actually producing right now okay, okay, is okay. manifesting in our today's politics, and you're foretelling it. We've, so. we've always known that. We've always known that the gray state is imminent. But the thing is, and the, it's like the worst thing. If you have an argument with the idiots and you win, they'll never know that you won. Because they, I mean, they're just, they're idiots. They don't understand the concept of the argument or the basis of the, the conversation. So I, mean, I had this thought, and I actually wrote it down in my journal when I was serving in Iraq, arguing with my LT, who I was, you know, more intelligent than, I suppose. Like, this guy's an idiot, and I just won in an argument, and he'll never know it. So there's no, there's no like, substantial uh, victory there, you know? So uh, the fact that the gray state is coming, and it's already here to a large extent, is meaningless, because most people will never acknowledge it. Just move along, there's nothing to see here, right? Go back to what you're doing. No, no, no. Right. These people live and die in this world, in this cage, and uh, they'll never understand that it's a cage. Going on my so it's, it's a great shame in many ways, but I don't know. I think most of the population of this country is essentially ballast. You know, victory or defeat will require a population reduction of 80%. Because even if, okay, 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 let's say uh, you're here for uh, liberty, right? I'm always here for liberty. Yeah, okay, liberty succeeds. Ron Paul, for whatever reason, you know, goes through hell and back and uh, becomes president of the United States and does everything he's gonna, he says he's going to do. 80% of the population, at least, I mean, they say the uh, revolutions are won by the 3%. That, that means 97% of the other people don't really uh, give a shit one way or the other. Okay, now you're, now you're taking away their entitlements. You're making them stand up for themselves and work for what they get. Mm. That's their revolution, buddy. <laughs> okay, so, uh, victory, our victory will eat us, basically. Yes, uh, sir. The liberty cause is fruitless with this ballast. Okay, we're a submarine underwater. We have to release the ballast to go deep. I mean, that's, okay, well, we got to release that ballast. I mean, it's sad to say. I'm, it's not like I'm advocating. Uh, Time to surface. Yeah, I mean, victory or defeat. I mean, you know, if they win, we lose. 
if we win, I mean, we still eventually lose because we have all these people. And if we're going to you know, reinstate a real democracy or a republic, these people are going to drag us right back down. Yeah, unfortunately, these people don't know what a real republic is. Yeah. It's governed by laws that the people elect their officials to put those laws in place. Yeah, we think that we can overrule that with democracy when 50 plus 1 says that they want what they want. So it's the politicians that sell out that makes your movie going to be successful. I don't think my movie will be successful. Hmm. What do you think? I think that it's yeah, an... Yeah, attitude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's just realistic. I don't know. Well, time will tell. Time will tell. But the talent anyway, level, the, the reanimated corpse of this society will toddle along for however, you know, however long it's intended to. I'm, I'm convinced that the reason that is is because of social engineering and the people have been programmed oh, for, for, you know, program responses. And so they don't necessarily think of themselves. Most of these people are incapable of critical thinking. And so that's the upward battle that we're fighting. Yeah, it's, it seems like a winnable battle when you're only fighting a small elected group of people, or maybe the 3,000 people that run the, uh, say, Council on Foreign Relations, Bil Bilderberg group, or whatever else. But when you have an entire population who grew up staring at this oblong box in the corner of the room, telling them what they should think, what they should feel, how they should dress, how they should act, what products to buy, we're fighting a majorly uphill battle, and the key to the whole thing is to wake up minds. Well, that's the basis of operant conditioning, isn't it? Yeah. Skinner's box. We're all in Skinner's box, and the nature of the Galen dialectic says you can't see the box until you step outside the box. Right. But I don't know, so the 4th of July hope. is... Uh, I, I believe you got to keep hope. The only way that we... Because even if, even, even if they did an 80% reduction, they're still going to repopulate it. And then you're going to have the same exact problem over and over again. History repeats itself. I mean, this is... Well, well, we created this country based upon the ideals and feelings and, 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 the, and the model that the founding fathers created. Why can't that happen again? If, oh, history, if, if history repeats itself, then we have the opportunity to do the exact same thing over again. Well, that's the nature of the gray state. I mean, uh, what we have in the past is, okay, the Roman Empire went through the same cycle. Right. But what was the last free society that we saw? Was it Rome? No. No, no, not really. And they were, I mean, that eventually imploded like it was supposed to, right? But Rome didn't have nuclear weapons or biological weapons or eugenics or uh, nanotechnology or control of the entire food supply. I mean, even back in the 30s when the economy collapsed, it sucked. But 90% of the people still provided their own food supply. We don't see that today. That's going back to what I said about ballast, these people are entirely reliant. Yes. Entirely reliant. So, like, like you said, Tim, happy because, Dependence Day. Right, which is which is ironic because we are celebrating Independence Day. <laughs> but if, if the grocery stores were to close today, oh my God, half of these people would not know how to eat. They would not know how to grow their own gardens, how to oh, be self-sufficient. How long does it take for a garden to come right. to fruition? Exactly. I mean, it is entirely hopeless. That's what I mean. Like victory or defeat, eighty percent. Because okay, if anything happens to the very delicate web intricacies of our current economic system, you know the way we get our food. Even anything happens, in three days you will you will steal for what you need to eat. In a week you'll kill for it. And consider that ninety-nine percent of these people are completely untrained and undisciplined. They will do barbarous, vicious terrible things to each other. Well, while the elite who created this situation sit back and just kind of watch it all play out. Oh, absolutely. And that's what it's designed to do. The, the upcoming civil war between the National Guard, the police, and the, you know, the armed alert citizen is entirely planned. In the end, it doesn't affect the elite who uh, orchestrated the whole thing. Because they always uh, create battles and sit back and kind of laugh at us for fighting amongst, amongst each other. And uh, why would they do it? Because... Because oh, it, it, it hurts America. Don't they care? Well, they're not American. No, they don't care. <laughs> this is just a vehicle of yeah. economic success that they've used to perpetuate their plans. Well, not only that, but you've got large corporations whose yearly gross profits exceed the majority of the GDPs of the countries in the world. So they literally consider themselves almost like, who are these countries? Like, why are you in our way? <laughs> so they don't look at boundaries the way that the rest of, the, of humanity looks at them. They think outside of the terms of 
nation states, they look at themselves as the people who create societies, build empires, and destroy them for their own profit and gain, for power and control. Well, sure. I mean, nation states you see being dissolved everywhere. What are we're not even in America anymore? We're in the uh, North American Union. America Incorporated. Is there Starbucks the Universe. Or, right? <laughs> what, what's the Fight Club quote? I forget. But yeah, I mean, that's why they're eroding sovereignty, and it's not a big deal to these people as they sit here about to watch the fireworks celebrating their independence. Right. Until it becomes a big deal, it's going to be entirely too late to do that uh, small-scale battle you're talking about of waking people up. Until it becomes real, until their Starbucks is taken away, they're not going to give a shit. Right. But, it, but once that Starbucks is taken away, that means that everything else is gone as well. So do you think that... The job that we're doing, trying to awaken minds, is a, is so futile that we shouldn't bother, or is it still a fight that we should wage anyway, even with the hope of maybe never winning? Well, you're asking me that, and I'm trying to make a film about this, so what does that tell you? I think everyone needs to operate in their own capacity, and maybe waking people up in small numbers like this is all we can do. So maybe uh, if you wake up that guy sitting over there, for example, maybe he'll become alert to the system and uh, maybe he'll pack away some food and he'll, his family will make it over that curve, that hump where everyone else is going to die off, but he'll be okay because he at least, you know, this is of course uh, worst case scenario, but in best case scenario, I mean, at least he knows. Best case scenario, we operate our, on our own uh, civil liberties, put our people in office, enact the grassroots reform that we want, we'd like to see for liberty. Worst case scenario, we just survive longer than everyone else. I, I was trained well by the military. <laughs> I was uh, in, the, in the Boy Scouts growing up. I'm, I'm going to survive no matter what happens, and I'm going to see if my family survives. But And then your generation, the people you survive with, your community that you start, that will be the next American Revolution that you're talking about, where the cycle will repeat itself, and we'll see another free society emerge in the, uh, the wasteland of the former United States. So what you're saying is no matter what, the elite are going to get their way of getting the depopulation. Okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> look, look, at, look at these people. Do you think when the time comes, there'll be a mass awakening and they'll stand up and say, yes, for liberty, I'm going to throw away all my entitlements. I'm going to start. No. Yeah, okay. They will support the system to the death. I guarantee this. There was, a, there was an interesting uh, show on the, I, I believe it was the National Geographic, where in, uh, I believe it was Jellystone Park, they had uh, the garbage there had been just left out and the bears over generations had come and just kind of scavenged off the garbage. And then they got sick of the bears coming around and scavenging the garbage. So then what they did was they locked the garbage up, thinking we're going to get rid of these pesky bears. But what they didn't realize was that over generation, these bears had lost their natural instinct to be able to hunt and survive that way to be independent of this garbage pile. And once they removed that garbage pile from them, then the bears started going out and, you know, going into campsites, digging through uh, camper stuff, and, and at times even attacking campers. So it's the same kind of mentality, and I could see that even though we should be, for all those people who believe in uh, evolution, that we're somehow a, a much greater species and we're so much better than the animals around us, I'll tell you something, <laughs> when, when push comes to shove, people, these people here, will act just as much like animals for their own survival because they be, they get brought down to that core survival mentality and then that's what we're going to be faced with. So imagine us three trying to survive and all of these people see that we have food, that we have shelter, that we have electricity, that we've figured out how to survive. We're going to have one heck of a battle on our hands fighting the very people that we've been trying to save this whole time. You're talking about the growth curve supplied by that trash heap. We're living in a trash heap, and we're all just the, the, the gulls, you know, circling and screaming around the top of it, waiting to get our fix. You take away that trash heap, well, we're going to revert back to normal. What is it? The, um, I, the scientific term alludes to me, but um, the natural zero, where we're supposed to be, our natural uh, alignment with our resources. So I think that's going to be 10 or 20 percent of our current population. That's why I say 80 percent reduction by victory or defeat. So those bears starved off until they reached their natural balance, didn't they? Yeah, and it's a terrible shame. You look around, 
they're all waving their flags it, today. We'll see what happens it, tomorrow. It truly, it truly is the Agilian dialectic, though. The problem, reaction, solution, where the problem mm -hmm. was created, or supposedly created, overpopulation, uh, lack of, of, of independent thinking, lack of, of uh, independent sustainability, where we become dependent on the system, and all they got to do then is pull the rug out from underneath us. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.